All right. Hope everyone's having a good Wednesday. Thank you, everyone, for, for joining us today. Um, today's topic is going to be owned inventory and stock replenishments. Uh, to help us out and to really go into this today is going to be Austin Rose. He is our go-to-market director here at FlexPoint. Um, and he's got pretty good knowledge on this, this new feature we've released and will be giving us our overview today. Um, so as usual, if you have any questions or if anything's not clear uh, as we're going through this, definitely post it in the chat or the Q&A section there, and we'll knock out those questions as we get them. Uh, Austin, I'll let you take it from here and start diving into it. Sounds good. Everybody, can you hear me? Sounds good, Justin? Yep, I got you. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks for having me on, Justin. Appreciate it. And thanks, everybody, for jumping in. Um, I know owned inventory has been something that's been talked about a good bit from uh, our support staff, our sales staff. Uh, we've been doing a handful of different marketing things. You might have seen us in the newsletter on the How It Works video that I created. Um, we're going to dive into a little bit of the nuance uh, sections of owned inventory. This is our version one. Uh, I just want to preface that, that we built pretty much the, the number one thing that we saw in regards to in regards to owning your own inventory and utilizing FlexPoint to help with that, um, the big thing for us was, and, and for our customers, was replenishing stock um, and being able to do that within the FlexPoint app. So adding more and more features into the FlexPoint app for managing your own inventory. So let's go ahead and jump right on in, save those questions for later. We'll get into a lot of the details. Um, and then obviously our support staff and, and implementation team will be standing by uh, for any questions that you have after the webinar. Um, so we're going to go over a quick overview, going to talk about a handful of the data points that are involved for uh, this owned inventory and stock replenishment. And then we'll jump into uh, the app and, and obviously show you guys around and show how everything works. Um, so just to kind of to set the scene, uh, owned inventory and stock replenishment, we, we now make it easier for our customers to either buy inventory from a third party fulfillment partner. So dropship supplier or a brand that you're working with or vendors that you're working with that are integrated into FlexPoint or moving inventory from another internal warehouse or location to a specific owned warehouse. Um, so again, you're replenishing stock at your own internal warehouse. And we have two different types going in with our own inventory and replenishing stock. And that's either buying products to bring into your own inventory or just sending an order to your own other internal warehouse to bring it to this specific internal warehouse. So it's pretty, the difference there is like you're actually purchasing the product from a third party fulfillment center, um, distributor, vendor, brand, or it's just you're just moving product from one location to another location. Um, so those are the two different use cases that we'll talk in about. And obviously the big thing here is we're all able to do it within the FlexPoint app. Um, so overall, it's adding more functionality to our inventory management and order management, um, making everything in-house and being able to do within the FlexPoint app and not having to go to either other softwares um, or doing everything manual outside of the FlexPoint app. Um, so let's talk about a few of the very important data points that are involved with owned inventory and stock replenishment inside FlexPoint. Uh, the big thing here is a brand new operation that we call a stocking manifest. You might see this as a new tab in the orders uh, page, in the orders tab. Um, and with that stocking manifest, you're creating two types of orders. One is a stocking purchase order. So the stocking purchase order is buying from a third party. Let's say you're uh, reordering a specific SKU from an integrated dropship supplier um, or supplier brand, anything that you have as a source in FlexPoint, and you're sending that to an internal warehouse, that's a stocking PO. The transfer order, sometimes we, we categorize as a TO, that is where you're you know ordering or you're placing an order with your own internal warehouse to send to another internal warehouse. So you're just transferring products from one warehouse to another. Um, couple of new things, you're going to see destination. That's like your own internal warehouse. Where is it being sent to? Um, you're requesting specific amount of, of quantity or specific SKU. Um, you'll also see incoming inventory. It's a brand new data point of just understanding the inventory levels that are coming from that product to your own internal warehouse. Um, being able to say that you have received, you are about to receive or you have received that specific shipment. Um, and then we also do provide a warehouse report uh, to show uh, the stocking purchase orders that you set up in the stocking manifest. Uh, now, the existing data points that are involved here is in order to place an order to send to your own internal warehouse, that source in FlexPoint needs to be categorized as an internal warehouse. It's a, it's a vendor type. Um, we'll show that in the source section. 
you need to make sure I have that toggled on because those are the only ones we can preface as the destination for this, um, this stocking manifest. Uh, source address. Um, if you have an address associated with a source in FlexPoint, we can pre-populate that when setting up the stocking um, purchase order or transfer order. Um, it's just a better way of doing it instead of you manually typing in an address. And then uh, the quantity, right? The quantity is obviously uh, manipulated and, and involved in this process. Um, so those are the new data points. These are the existing data points. Now let's go ahead and uh, jump into the app. So let me jump out of here. Let's go ahead into this uh, demo app that I have here, this demo account. Um, so again, the brand new operation that you're going to see is within the orders tab, and it's here under stocking manifest. This is where you set up stocking purchase orders and transfer orders to replenish stock for your internal warehouses. So your internal warehouse is obviously needs to be an integrated source in FlexPoint. Um, when I go to the sources section, I'm going to go to you know some of my sources here let's see here's my internal warehouse you can see the source type is internal warehouse um, how to change that or um, preface that is right here in the source type and then the address if you want this to be pre-populated uh, whenever you're setting up a, a stocking manifest uh, you can have that here as well um, so you can just always reuse this and not have to type it in so just a couple things that you need to set up on the sources side um, obviously a big caveat here is you are reordering products that live in your internal warehouse that are also from a third party or another warehouse so those products have to match within flexpoint um, because you're just replenishing stock you're not adding new stock to an internal warehouse you're not saying okay i need to go order you know these brand new products from this third party and uh, i want to send it to my internal warehouse and it's never existed in my feed or in my internal warehouse or my my source in flexpoint these are just replenishing the stock so that's again that's a, another caveat to think about here um, but here, let's set up the stocking manifest. Um, so whenever I go to orders tab, stocking manifest tab here, you can see some of the stocking manifests that I have set up. Again, a stocking manifest is just the operation. You're setting up a stocking manifest to set up this two different type of purchase orders, stocking purchase order, transfer order. Um, so let's go ahead and build a new one. And then we'll jump into some of these existing ones to show everything works. Um, so I'm going to build a new one. Again, destination. There you go. It's going to be my internal warehouse. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select my warehouse address, or you can type in a, a, um, a custom one, totally up to you guys. Um, usually we just do the warehouse and then billing address is usually the same. Or if you need to do a, a new custom address, um, maybe you need to send over billing address details to your integrated source. You can do that here. Um, and, another and thing, Austin, that, yeah. that warehouse address, that's what pulls from the field that you set up on that source warehouse. That's correct. It's auto populated from there. Awesome. Yeah. And then another thing to note is there is a shipping policy option here. Obviously, your suppliers or, or um, integrated sources or brands, wherever you want to replenish stock from, you want to get products from, um, they might have specific shipping policies. This shipping policy is the global one that you set up in your settings section um, to just select because obviously a shipping you know, mapping has to be in play here. It's, it's, it's again, it's just like all your other orders. This is just more of a bulk one um, to send to your own internal warehouse. So just one thing to keep in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and add products. Um, so I set up the stocking manifest. I know where I need to send it to. Now we need to start adding products. Um, so you can see all of the info here on the left-hand side and you can edit. I'm going to select the SKU. Um, so it's really important to whenever you're setting these up, you can see all the criteria that we're looking at when it comes to placing a, a um, stocking purchase order or transfer order through the stocking manifest with your integrated sources. Um, really important to note that. So again, here's some scopes. This is just an example that, uh, that I have integrated with both my internal warehouse and um, I believe RSR group is my supplier that I'm using in this, um, in this uh, reference. So I can come in here. I can look at some of these products, um, which it, what's really cool is whenever I do click on this SKU, you can see, I can see what's available in their feed and what they have. Um, so I'm able to be like, okay, this is a really expensive item. I only need a couple. I don't need, you know, to do a big order. I can come in here and say, they've got three. Okay, perfect. I only need two. And I'm going to type in two here. Um, you can see the total. You can see more information about the products that you're ordering from. Um, and then I can add this to the manifest. 
So whenever I add this to the manifest, you can see that this is now a stocking purchase order. Um, this is the PO that I just created um, for this stocking manifest. So I'm still building the stocking manifest. I've, I've added this SKU as a stocking purchase order to my stocking manifest operation, and I just need to finish it out. Um, before I finish it out, I could add more SKUs if I wanted to, right? Maybe we want to make this a really big bulk order to replenish stock. Um, maybe you just need to do this one off really quickly. Totally up to you. Um, the cool thing about all this is I can come in here and I can just add, you know, more um, uh, customizability to it, purchase number, purchase order number, something to reference. Um, again, the shipping method, this is this is uh, the shipping method that I'd like to select for RSR group because this is where I'm placing the orders from or wanting to get the order from. Um, and you can add in a note as well. Um, so again, we're still studying up the stocking manifest. It's not created yet. Um, here's the purchase order and I need to generate this purchase order to get started. Um, so everything's set up here. We're going to replenish stock on these two um, scopes. Um, what I really like to do here is, is, you know, we like to reference a number for almost everything, right? An order, a purchase order, a stocking manifest, a uh, cross stock order, things like that. Um, what I suggest here is actually like putting in the date. So I would say, you know, this is a... Um, uh, this is the best way of categorizing it because when I want to go back to my stocking manifest, I want to see, you know, the orders that I've done. Um, so we'll just put in the date now. And then boom, stocking manifest is set up. Um, this is the reference number again that I created. Um, this is just our internal stocking manifest number. Um, you can see the purchase order on this stocking manifest. So if I click on this purchase order, uh, it's it's going to go into it and show me more details. Uh, we were able to put purchase orders in their own view, in their own screen. Um, right now, the the order's not processed yet, so I can come in here and I can select. And I can go ahead and process it over to the supplier um, to get it going. Um, or I can save it as a draft. That's what's really cool. I think a lot of people, they want to start creating orders, but they don't want to quite process it right out of the get-go. So I can create this. And this is just going to stay as an unprocessed stocking purchase order until I actually go in and process it. So one thing to note, um, I'm going to go ahead and process this one. Um, it's going to take me to the purchase or the stocking purchase, sorry, the stocking manifest screen, which I can then click on the stocking purchase order to see more details. Um, you can see that, you know, we're, we're requesting to quantity. It's processing right now. We're going to wait for it to be acknowledged um, from that supplier or from that warehouse. Um, and then from here, we can talk about how, how we've received this, you know, this order in my own internal warehouse. But just to show you, and let's go back to the main screen just to kind of bring it full circle. Stocking manifest, boom, here we go. Top one, you can see this is the brand new stocking manifest I created. When I click in here, it goes right back to that screen I was just on. And if I can even go a little bit deeper, I can go to the actual purchase order itself um, and it shows all the details. So right, whenever they acknowledge it, it'll show acknowledge instead of processing. Whenever they add in a shipment tracking for that order being sent to you in your internal warehouse, the, the shipment tracking will automatically populate. Um, what's really cool is we can ingest invoices as well. Um, so a bunch of different ways, you know, that this is, again, this is more of just a different type of purchase order. You guys have seen purchase orders in FlexPoint. This is a stocking purchase order specific for stock replenishment. Um, one last thing that you can do in here besides editing, you know, obviously like the shipment tracking invoices and certain stuff, um, you can put in custom fields as well for this order. So at this time, you know, if we wanted to send over a custom field for maybe a specific source that needs uh, more data, right, for this order, um, you know, uh, print on demand is one that we help out with with custom fields. You can do that as well. Um, it's available um, just in case that's needed. Now, obviously, we created the stocking purchase order and uh, a transfer order. If I created a transfer order to just go from one uh, warehouse to another warehouse, it would look exactly the same as this. It would be the exact same process. The only thing, instead of saying stocking purchase order, it would say transfer order. Um, and then obviously, there would be no funds transacted between you and your internal integrated source, right? It's your own warehouse. So nothing's going to happen there. Um, the one thing to note, and let me go back to my stocking manifests is uh, once it's been shipped and once it's been processed and once it's it's coming into uh, your internal warehouse, how does that all work with FlexPoint? Um, so I've got a good example here. Let me click on this stocking manifest I created a little bit earlier. Um, you can see that this has been acknowledged by RSR um, and they've shipped this, uh, but I've only received partial amount. Um, so this is where it gets a little interesting where you want to leverage this stocking manifest based off of quantity of that product in your internal warehouse. 
Um, so when I go to, I can, I can do a handful of different things by, this is where that new data point receive comes into play. I can say to flex point, I have received all five of these uh, SKUs and uh, that will then get added into um, my, uh, my quantity for that SKU on the product level, which will then automatically get updated to your sales channel almost real time, right? So that's the most important part here is once it is received, how is quantity reflected uh, for this specific product? So let's go into this purchase order real quick. And I want to show you what I did. I, I said I received two. Um, so we're still waiting on three because I ordered five. Um, you can actually come in and um, say, you know what? RSR got back to me. They said one of the SKUs they weren't able to send. They were only sent four instead of five. I can come in here and void one of them. Um, to just really show, you know, like we only really received four. We didn't receive five. Um, so one thing to note, hopefully majority of the times that doesn't happen. Um, but obviously we've seen that in the use cases that happens here and there. Um, but let's say, you know, we received two. Let's say we received that third. Um, and uh, let's actually, before we do that, let me, I'm going to take this skew. I'm actually going to take, I think this is an MPN right here. And let's look at this at the product level. All right, so I'm going to bring this skew up. So I went to products, went to product variants, found that variant. Um, and this is where you can see, right, this is being, this can be sourced from my internal warehouse or RSR. Um, you can see that the quantity was updated to two once I clicked receive. And then just to show it full circle, you know, I come back here and I say, you know what? Yep, I did uh, receive one more, still waiting on that other scope, but let's go ahead and come in here and say, yep, I received um, one more. So I've received three. So this has been updated. I come over to my product. I'm going to uh, hard refresh this. Scroll down. And then you can see here it's been added. And then obviously the main quantity has been updated from 12 to 13. Um, so again, it's it's leveraging our functionality within FlexPoint to, to tell FlexPoint, I have in fact received this bulk order from this stock replenishment that I set up, this stocking manifest. Um, and it is now automatically reflected once I tell FlexPoint it's been received to my product quantity, which will then update on the next update to your sales channel. Um, again, this is a this is kind of a, I know this is a little bit of a manual process and a lot of times FlexPoint, we try to automate as much as possible. We wanted to get this out bare bones for our customers. And this has been actually a big ad because a lot of customers out there have to go outside of FlexPoint, you know, call up their supplier, call up their brand, maybe place manual orders and some really outdated develop, um, portal, uh, buying portal, you know, they have to do with your distributors. Um, we wanted to make it very easy because your sources are integrated in the FlexPoint and we want to make it easy for you to replenish stock of your owned inventory in FlexPoint itself by setting up a stocking manifest to do a stocking purchase order or a transfer order. Um, so just wanted to bring it full circle. Again, there's a lot of things you can do here. There's a lot of manual things you can do here, receiving products, um, adjusting it versus void, right? Voiding products. If for some reason, um, you need to avoid it. There also are other actions that you can take on this purchase order as well. Um, so you can actually manually uh, process and manually acknowledge products too. If you want to, if you need to be hands-on again, majority of times we don't want you to be hands-on. We want to automate this as much as possible. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything that's involved with owned inventory and stock replenishment. Um, you need to make sure you have a source integrated with inventory with, as a internal warehouse source type. Um, from there, you need to also make sure that the, the SKUs that you want to repurchase are um, linked and integrated from two different sources, whether it's uh, two internal warehouses or, you know, let's say like a dropship supplier and an internal warehouse, the, that connection needs to take place in the product catalog. Um, from there, you're able to create stocking manifest to replenish stock of those SKUs. And then you're able to bring it full circle by, by telling FlexPoint, I've received this specific um, SKU count. Now, one thing to note, and this is the last thing to note about this update is uh, the idea of understanding how quantity is being updated with the receive button that we added versus the, um, uh, the feed monitoring that we're doing, right? So let's say your internal warehouse is actually 
SKU vault, or it's a, uh, it's a software out there that we're integrated with or an FTP that we're integrated with. And we're, we're constantly looking at quantities there. Um, at the end of the day, we will take your feed being updated um, as the source of truth or the priority over you saying that you've received uh, those specific products. So that's the determination you need to make with our support staff and implementation team is what's the better route for you. Most of the time, this is kind of like a light WMS uh, functionality for us. Um, where customers don't really have like the software to put this in place. So they'll just use the receive button. Half the times, you know, other customers, they they trust their software that's integrated for their internal warehouse. And they're going to use that as the source of truth of quantity and they won't use the receive button. Mm -hmm. So it's two different things that you'll just have to figure out with our support team what works best for you. Uh, but those are two different ways that we can help out from that. All right, so that's our stocking manifest. Um, I think that's about everything. Justin, anything I missed here? No, I think that's good. We've got uh, two questions here that that came in the chat, and um, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to answer as best I can. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm on the, the marketing side, so we'll get uh, we'll get Justin to give it the team to, if I can't quite answer it. Yeah. So uh, first one is uh, since they ask about QuickBooks integration, so they use uh, QuickBooks Desktop to do their stocking POs. Um, they understand mm -hmm. that we don't. Um, uh, that we don't integrate with the order side of things with uh, QuickBooks desktop like we do with online, but is there any way to upload this data in the QuickBooks desktop? Um, so is there any like export features here that we could use to, to get this data out from the stocking manifest page? Yeah, so I believe we were able to do exports um, on this. I'd have to look into that a little bit more. I believe we can export this data uh, into like a file to get that into um, QuickBooks Desktop. I know, I know too, there is a possibility for us to automate and integrate to QuickBooks Desktop that our, our um, solutions consultants and team can take a look into as well, um, if that's a need. Um, but I'm pretty positive that you can export this. Honestly, right now, I, I can't tell you exactly where we can export it, um, but I believe gotcha. it is possible. We'll follow up with you on that answer. Um, I'll get Justin too. Yeah. And then um, another one, do these stocking manifest orders get sent to the source as dropship orders that just have the internal warehouse address? Um, if that's the case, many sources, for example, RSR don't allow drop shipping of certain brands. Um, so I can speak a little bit to this. It's, it's going to send this as a PO during uh, using the, the typical send PO process for that source. Um, I do know in certain cases, sources um, and these suppliers that you're working with um, a lot of times you can put a certain flag on the file if it's more of this, this stocking order versus a drop ship. Um, so that's something we can definitely work with you on um, at a supplier by supplier basis, essentially, um, to figure out what note, notation or flag we need to trigger on that file. Um, and we can very likely put some rules around that to, to handle that in cases like this. Yeah, and I know there's a couple different use cases where we'll be we'll be able to set up a new send purchase order specific for stocking manifests. Uh, that's one thing to do because I do know like RSR and, and a couple other suppliers out there, if you want to place a bulk order, not a dropship order, it needs to go through a, a different type of operation or mechanism, right? It's not a API integration, it's an FTP integration. So sometimes we'll have to just set up a new source for you um, to do those type of order, to, to utilize a stocking manifest for those specific type of sources and suppliers. Um, one thing to note to take it back as well was whenever you are setting of stocking purchase orders, uh, you can add in custom fields. So we might be able to leverage custom fields for that specific use case as well. Um, we just need to dive into the source data, specifically how they take it in, just like Justin said, write a specific flag, a specific column, um, and then we'll go off of that. But I think that's honestly a big reason why we leverage custom fields here um, for um, stocking purchase orders. Exactly, exactly. Um, so I'll give everyone another minute here. If there's any other questions uh, regarding stocking manifest and tracking orders, definitely get them in. Um, as always, you know, if there's any questions, you need any additional help on this, um, our support team, support at, flex point, support at flexpoint.com via email is a great start. If you need a little bit more um, in-depth look at things, you can always schedule a, a 10 or 20 minute support call with our team as well. 
um, we'll be able to hop on screen share and, and really do a, do a deep dive into whatever you're needing help with, um, whether this is, you know, around stocking purchase orders and, and transfer orders or any other help with, with FlexPoint in general. One thing to note too, let's bring this up. Um, I believe we added a how it works owned inventory section to our how it works videos. Um, so whenever I go down to the footer, it was a how it works um, link right here under other quick links. And then here under the inventory management, we have owned inventory. Um, this is, I would highly suggest people take a look at this as well. It's not quite a support doc, um, but it does help. Uh, we have a how it works video. Uh, look at that. That guy looks me. familiar. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> but we actually, uh, we put a lot of, uh, a lot of details into the description as well. This isn't just like a transcript off of this video. We put a lot of details, um, into what's different as well. So I'd highly suggest taking a look at this. And I believe we've added, uh, support on our docs as well. Um, you know, one thing to note, I just want to kind of preface this at the end is with stock replenishments and, and um, stocking manifests, all of these different new data points, it's going to take a couple of days. It took a couple of days of, you know, for our team to fully understand how this works in different, different nuanced. I mean, we see this all the time, right? Different nuanced workflows and processes. How does this work for my use case versus this other use case? And, you know, us trying to solve all of these different use cases. Um, you know, it takes a little bit of time to figure out exactly how it works. The good thing is, is we've shown this to a lot of users and people have gotten pretty excited about it. Um, so just one thing to notice check this how it works video out here and guide um and then definitely reach out to our support team you know there's a little bit of a learning curve that we'd love to teach you and i don't think i think that's it i don't think there's any more questions or chats coming through um we'll get justin to uh find out a little bit more so me and my me and him will find out about the quickbooks desktop and exporting out this data um and what we can do from that perspective but other than that, I think that's about it. I lost my Zoom. Awesome. Yes. Thanks again, Austin, for presenting this today. I knew it was a big help, and, and hopefully we've gotten some details here and, and some folks uh, see this and we'll get some use out of it. Um, again, appreciate everyone else for joining today. Um, we'll let you get back to your lunch and get back to your work day. Hope everyone has a good rest of the week, and we'll see you next Wednesday. Um, for our next weekly webinar.